Lady Hunstanton rings the bell. When I knew Lord Illingworth first as plain George Harford, he was simply a very brilliant young man about town with not a penny of money, except what poor dear Lady Cecilia gave him. She was quite devoted to him. Oh, here is the dear Archdeacon. Enter Farquhar, the butler, Lord Illingworth, Sir John, and the Archdeacon. Sir John goes to Lady Stutfield, the Archdeacon to Lady Hunstanton. Uh, never mind, Farquhar, it doesn't matter. Lord Illingworth has been most entertaining. I have never enjoyed myself more. Ha, huh, Mrs. Arbuthnot. You see, I've got Mrs. Arbuthnot to come to me at last. That is a great honor, Lady Hunstanton. Mrs. Daubeny will be quite jealous of you. Oh, I am so sorry. Mrs. Daubeny could not come with you tonight. Headache as usual, I suppose. Yes, Lady Hunstanton, a perfect martyr. But she is happiest alone. She is happiest alone. John? Sir John goes over to his wife. Archdeacon Daubeny talks to Lady Hunstanton and Mrs. Arbuthnot, who watches Lord Illingworth the whole time. He has passed across the room without noticing her, and approaches Mrs. Allenby, who, with Lady Stutfield, is standing by the door looking onto the terrace. How is the most charming woman in the world? Mrs. Allenby takes Lady Stutfield by the hand. We are both quite well, thank you, Lord Illingworth. But what a short time you've been in the dining room. It seems as if we had only just left. I was bored to death. Never opened my lips the whole time. Absolutely longing to come in to you. You should have. The American girl has been giving us a lecture. Really? All Americans lecture, I believe. I suppose it is something in their climate. What does she lecture about? Oh, Puritanism, of course. I am going to convert her, am I not? How long do you give me? A week. Oh, a week is more than enough. Enter Gerald and Lord Alfred. Dear mother! Gerald, I don't feel at all well. Please see me home. I shouldn't have come. Oh, I'm so sorry, mother. Certainly, but you must know Lord Illingworth first. Not tonight, Gerald. Lord Illingworth, I want you so much to know my mother. Uh, with the greatest pleasure. I'll be back in a moment, Mrs. Allenby. People's mothers always bore me to death. Mm. All women become like their mothers. That is their tragedy. No man does. That is his. What a delightful mood you are in tonight. Lord Illingworth turns round and goes across with Gerald to Mrs. Arbuthnot. When he sees her, he starts back in wonder. Then slowly his eyes turn toward Gerald. Mother, this is Lord Illingworth who has offered to take me as his private secretary. It is a wonderful opening for me, isn't it? I hope he won't be disappointed in me, that is all. You'll thank Lord Illingworth, Mother, won't you? Lord Illingworth is very good, I am sure, to interest himself in you for the moment. Oh, Gerald and I are great friends already, Mrs. Arbuthnot. There can be nothing in common between you and my son, Lord Illingworth. Dear Mother, how can you say so? Of course, Lord Illingworth is awfully clever in that sort of thing. There is nothing Lord Illingworth doesn't know. My dear boy. He knows more about life than anyone I've ever met. I feel an awful duffer when I am with you, Lord Illingworth. Of course, I've had so few advantages. I have not been to Eton or Oxford like other chaps, but Lord Illingworth doesn't seem to mind that. He's been awfully good to me, Mother. Lord Illingworth may change his mind. He may not really want you as his secretary. Mother. You must remember, as you said yourself, you have had so few advantages. Lord Illingworth, I want to speak to you for a moment. Do come over. Will you excuse me, Mrs. Arbuthnot? Now, don't let your charming mother make any more difficulties, Gerald. The thing is quite settled, isn't it? I hope so. I thought you were never going to leave the lady in black velvet. She is excessively handsome. Caroline, shall we all make a move to the music room? Miss Worsley is going to play. You'll come too, dear Mrs. Arbuthnot, won't you? You don't know what a treat is in store for you. I must really take Miss Worsley down some afternoon to the rectory. I should so much like dear Mrs. Daubeny to hear her on the violin. Oh, I forgot. Dear Mrs. Daubeny's hearing is a little defective, isn't it? Her deafness is a great privation to her. She can't even hear my sermons now. She reads them at home. But she has many resources in herself. Many resources. She reads a good deal, I suppose? Just the very largest print. 
The eyesight is rapidly going, but she's never morbid. Never morbid. Do speak to my mother, Lord Illingworth, before you go into the music room. She seems to think somehow you don't mean what you said to me. Aren't you coming? In a few moments. Uh, Lady Hunstanton, if Mrs. Arbuthnot would allow me, I would like to say a few words to her, and we will join you later on. Oh, of course. You will have a great deal to say to her, and she will have a great deal to thank you for. It is not every son who gets such an offer, Mrs. Arbuthnot. But I know you appreciate that, dear. John! Now don't keep Mrs. Arbuthnot too long, Lord Illingworth. We can't spare her. Everyone exits except Lord Illingworth and Mrs. Arbuthnot. 